Okay, here we have the um, setup we're looking at at the moment, and you'll see it's a uh, very large toroid core, um, but it's a little different. And you'll see right there, there's two sets of windings coming out of the core material itself. So the way I made this one <coughs> is I took a uh, ferrite toroid, much larger than this one of course, and I wound two sets of windings around that ferrite core. Um, one wire size is 0.55 and the other size is 0.61 and around the outside I have 0.8mm copper wire very heavy stuff. I did have speaker wire, I've changed it out for this um, works much better uh, so anyway after we uh, wound our 30 turns on our um, ferrite toroid which I just dropped um, I then encased it in uh, liquid steel to make this big one so that uh, toroid with the two sets of windings around it is in the middle of this large one here and of course our drive windings around the outside uh, this is our power winding or our power in to create our magnetic field so um, first test show some very interesting effects with this as you might have seen on previous posts um, from the scope shots but uh, what I've got to do now is wind 30 turns of one of the two same size wires probably go the 0.55 around the outside so as we compare we can compare the um, power out from the outer windings to the power out from the windings that are in the middle of this core and uh, just to confirm something that I'm seeing which is as you can see from the previous scope shots uh, even when this coil is switched off the um, inner coils keep producing a current right through until the next cycle starts um, and my initial test with the 10 turns on the outer of this coil um, that I previously had wound on here along with the speaker wire shows that as soon as this coil is switched off the current stops flowing through that secondary winding that's around the outside however it continues to flow on the windings on the inside so um, I'm going to go ahead now and put 30 windings around the outside to equal the uh, turn ratio of the windings on the inside um, but of course we're going to use about three times as much wire because of the larger diameter and then we'll come back and do some uh, testing oh by the way these are my two identical globes and I'll be using those as loads and we're simply running off a 12 volt battery which is not very healthy um, when our pulse width modulator switch is on that voltage drops down to 4 volts across the coil around 4 to 5 volts depending on um, how high I have the duty cycle which at the moment was only running at 10% on time and um, had a fair bit of power coming out of those globes but uh, I'll go ahead and wind the other winding on and uh, we'll get down to some comparison testing so um, here's our completed setup I now have 30 turns um, around the outside of our toroid um, and this is the same as the amount of turns on the inside coil only we've just used about three times as much wire um, so the outer secondary is hooked to the left hand side globe and the inner secondary one of them is hooked to the right hand side globe and the second inner secondary we are not using um, our primary is 20 turns and um, our secondaries are 30 turns each so it's a 1 to 1.5 ratio um, our driver circuit is just to cut the MOSFETs 
Um, good for 20 amps this one and it is being triggered from our signal generator. I have a uh, diode here to stop um, any feedback going back into my signal generator. Uh, the scoop, channel 1, the yellow trace is across um, this globe which is our outer secondary. Channel 2, the blue trace is across our inner secondary and load. Um, both globes are identical. When I start it, first thing I'll do is swap them over so you can see there's no hanky-panky with the globes. So this globe here is going to be running in a standard transformation um, system or a standard transformer setup where the primary and the secondary are both wound around the outside of the toroid. And this globe here, of course, is running off the windings that are in the middle of the toroid core itself. Our supply is 12 volts and we will be running at 2 kilohertz with a duty cycle of only 11%. Um, now the reason I'm using Pulse DC is so we can see the effect that's going on on the inner windings which are inside the core. Um, and that's what I'm finding very interesting. So uh, we'll go ahead, I'll switch it on and um, we can have a look at the outputs in the way of visual light and also on the scope and um, while it's running I'll then swap the globes over and uh, we can see that there is going to be no difference alright so power on now straight away you can see the globe on the right which is on the inner windings definitely has a far better coupling with the outer primary than the outer secondary that's wound right next to it. So I'm going to take the globes out while it's running and we'll put that one over there. And as you can see it is still the same. Alright, so let's have a look at our scope. Oh, one thing um, I'm triggering off the primary coil itself. Um, this way when I disconnect each one of the um, globes individually uh, we don't have a case where we have no trigger source and our um, measurements don't go AWOL. So um, yeah, triggering off the primary coil keep our scope um, traces nice and steady. Like I said the yellow trace is across the secondary coil that's wound around the outside of the core alongside the primary coil and the blue trace is from our centre winding and as you can see the results are far far better. So now I'll disconnect the outer um, winding, the output winding, and as you can see things are pretty much the same. So I'll hook that back up and I'll disconnect our inner drive. Things are pretty much the same. So what I wanted to show you with this was um, in order to produce a current of course we have to have a changing magnetic field and what I'm going to do now is we're going to decrease the voltage divisions so we can get a decent look at it. Now the yellow trace is our outer secondary, so here we have our on time of our primary, primary switches off, our voltage drops and we get a large overshoot from the outer secondary and then the voltage sweeps around which means our current flow is also very similar to uh, that. But you'll see on the blue trace when the uh, 
primary is switched off, current continues until the next pulse at a far, far higher rate or a higher value than that of the outer winding. So I'll just disconnect the outer one again. And now we can see our primary comes on, switches off, the voltage drops, we get a bit of an overshoot, and then the current continues through that globe right into our next on state of our primary. So we're at 2 volt divisions on both channels, so we've got about 2.2 volts across that globe, back until about 2 volts. So the lowest the voltage across the uh, globe on the inner windings ever gets is 2 volts. <coughs> now if I disconnect our inner windings, hook back up our outer windings, you can see here the voltage decreases right down to about 0.8 of a volt before the next cycle. Um, so it is nowhere near as great as the uh, windings that are on the inside of our toroid. And you can also clearly see the difference in coupling between our primary and our outer and inner secondary. So um, now the thing to keep in mind is this output here from the inner windings is only using one third the amount of wire that we have on our very sad output on our outer secondary. So we use one third the amount of wire and we are getting far far greater power output. So um, that's where we're at at the moment. I just found it very interesting that once the uh, primary is switched off current or power can continue to flow through that globe and that is enough to keep it lit. I've um, placed a diode in here in the correct direction so we're just driving the globe um, during the off state of our primary and it will indeed light the globe up, nothing like that. Um, it looks more like that but um, it is actually being driven from the collapsing magnetic field where of course if we do the same here um, we will get nothing. Which in fact is exactly what I'm going to do now. So um, I'm going to chuck a couple of diodes in line so we can drive the globes um, from the magnetic energy um, on the off state or in the off time of the primary coil. So we'll be back shortly. Alright, so what I've done, I've just chucked two 1N4004s. Um, so as the power going to each globe is only the inductive kickback now. Um, I have dropped the duty cycle down to 8%. So our on time in our primary is 8% and our off time of course will be 92%. Now you can see here, um, I've moved it across so switch off time is in line with our centre vertical um, division. The yellow trace of course being our outer winding you can see that the magnetic field is totally dissipated by the second division and we have another two and three quarter divisions before the uh, transformer switches on again. So um, the magnetic field is uh, totally dissipated by the second division around the outside of the core but if we look at our second globe you can see upon switch off we get a slight increase in current or power flow through the uh, load which is our globe and then it slowly diminishes but the magnetic field on the inner part of the core around our inner windings has not fully dissipated before the next cycle starts. It is still there because it's still producing current. Um, well, the inner winding is still producing current which means the magnetic field is still changing around that um, inductor. 
So um, that there's pretty much for flat out proof that the um, magnetic field around the outside of the um, toroid core has dissipated far far sooner than the field around the inner part of the core or in the centre of the core so um, and it ha like I said it hasn't fully dissipated before the next cycle starts we would have to reduce our on time to get that to happen just right about there so now I'm down to a 5% duty cycle as you can see the outer field or magnetic field um, has pretty much well cacked it um, within half a division whereas the field on the or the field in the center of our toroid is still producing power across our load right up until our next switch on and you can see the little globe there is indeed still glowing whereas that one is totally dead and I'll just decrease the voltage divisions again so we can get a clearer look at that so once again about the first division the uh, magnetic field around the outer um, perimeter of our toroid has completely dissipated but on the inside of the toroid it continues right up until our next on period and I'm going to take it right down to 1% and we have nothing 2, 3 So that is a 4% duty cycle, that is 5, and that is 6. So there you go. <coughs> the um, field, magnetic field, definitely continues on for a far, far greater period of time um, at the centre of the uh, toroid than what it does around the outside. And um, like the scope is showing us, that field is still present and has not completely collapsed on the inside before our next on time starts. So this setup here um, is far, far more efficient um, than a standard toroid transformer, having the windings in the centre of the uh, core is a uh, much better option so um, that's about it for this video the next one we're going to replace the globes with 200 ohm resistors as our loads and uh, we're going to come back and have a look thanks for watching guys